sound of footsteps in the dark, to voices that may not be quite human, to the sound of screams in the night, the haunted cabaret, the home of all things horror, on Rhode Island Free Radio.org, with your host, George Garner. The Haunted Cabaret starts now.
All right, that was Judas Priest, Living Bad Dreams. And you are not going to find a deeper Judas Priest track than that. That was an addition to the remastered Painkiller, my favorite Judas Priest album. Yeah, that's the only place you're going to find that song there. And it leads off this issue of the Haunted Cabaret. Probably, this is a segue that created itself. This wasn't a spontaneous segue. (laughs) Donald Trump is in town. So I just felt that there was some kind of a psychic symbiosis working there between living bad dreams and the idea of Donald Trump running the United States. <laughs> he's going to come in here any second now. He's going to point at us and tell the security guards to escort these men out of here, please. Well, first we'll be fired. Yeah, yeah. Whether or not he owns the com- this company, we'll He'll still be buy fired. It. He'll <laughs> buy it to <laughs> fire us. <laughs> We're still fired. Here's a million dollars, now you're and fired. And now Buckles no, really no, is then, in my no, chair. Then, no, the million dollars will go to our landlord. Yeah. <laughs> so that when he says we're fired, it will be enforced. Exactly. <laughs> you cannot let them resign their lease. No, I'll tell you, I, yeah, I did... He holds a weird fascination for me, though, I have to admit. Um, you know, he was appearing in uh, Warwick today. I did take a ride down there. I didn't get in because apparently the venue sat 800 people and about 4,000 showed up. (laughs) So I think you would have had to be there like 5 o'clock in the morning to get a place in the event. So, Which, by the way, since 75% of the people in Rhode Island are unemployed, that's not an issue. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) But, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's It's a weird situation. I mean, because... Now, this is a guy that the, I think the first, the first place that he was predicted to be president was on The Simpsons. I mean, it's just. Sounds right. I mean, talk about. It's a weird twist. Now, I said earlier on in um, one of my shows way back when, when I worked for one of the competitors, that everything nowadays is fiction. In other words, that's my theory going forward. In other words, there's no such thing as news, there's no such thing as nonfiction, there's no. Everything. Is, we're experiencing is fiction. It, whether it, whether it's in the media, whether and one of my earliest cases in point was when we had the um, imitation Joker there killing all those people in the Batman movie. Yeah. In other words, this guy thinks he's the Joker. <laughs> I mean, we've gone from comic books, you know, we've gone from a character in a comic book to people dressing up at Comic-Con to a person who believes and acts like he is, we now have in, on this planet, the Joker. I mean, so I'm not, the well, reality. Then I need you guys to think you're Howard Stern so we can start making some money around here. <laughs> I I'll, am, be, I'll be Robin. <laughs> I will be Robin. I am all too willing to make money. I am <laughs> Trump-like in my longing for money i mean i'll write down to the gold faucets the problem we have around here and i'm gonna since you mention it mr jones and and even the evil clown is not without there is too much damn charity work (laughs) going on didn't virgil tell us that (laughs) yeah he did tell me that we do too much yeah you do too much charity work now when now when virgil (laughs) <laughs> the jobber wrestler to end all jobber wrestlers <laughs> tells you that you are doing too much for free. I tell him to F you. <laughs> well, yes, you do. Because yeah. Virgil's a piece of trash anyway. Yeah. But I, don't, I, I would like to know what he does for money. I really, you know, he I, he and, begs and that, on internet for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, and, for that matter, and for that matter, what he does for free. I mean, <laughs> really. Uh, he polishes Million Dollar Man's genitals <laughs> for free. I mean, yeah. possibly. I'm sorry, good. Ted. I'm sorry. Yeah, Don't beat me say, up next I, time we I, meet. I'm pretty sure oh. that's not an accurate oh, statement. Actually, <laughs> actually, between Comic-Cons and events of that nature, I'm pretty sure that Virgil stands out on the corner along with the homeless. Oh, yeah. You know, with one of those signs saying, you know, I held Ted DiBiase's coat. Whatever you can spare. Yeah. You know, didn't some... didn't he say something like that too? Now we had the privilege of having lunch with Ted. Yeah, he, he told me he yeah, did. And, and Ted did say it's about time for Virgil to cut the umbilical cord. So I think he was telling them, "Stop living off my coat damn tail. coattails." Yes, yeah, claim to fame. Yeah, his one, his one claim to fame. Oh yeah, I was with I was with Ted DiBiase. Let's never forget the one screw up 
I, I remember this like it was yesterday, uh, live television on WCW when he goes to run up the ropes and do his famous move there. And as he got on the second rope, he went ass over tea kettle. Oh. Boom. Right face first down into the <laughs> ring. Right. Yeah, that's when you knew Virgil's career was done. I'll tell you, it was just go now, this just goes to uh, further my point about everything being fiction. You notice how easily and effortlessly we segued from Donald Trump's campaign, which is a real world, supposedly real world thing, yep. right, to pro wrestling. Wasn't Donald Trump in there too? He showered him and with money. Exactly. Donald, yes, I remember at WrestleMania, and Donald he Trump. Vince McMahon's head. Yeah, yes. Give, Donald Trump giving Vince McMahon a clothesline outside the ring, and then shaving Vince McMahon's head. It's a perfect transition. Yeah, I mean, and if there's anybody, actually, I think pro wrestling might have been first. I guess before that, you would have to go back to the freak shows of the, you know, the carnival freak shows. Yeah. To really see that blurring of the line between. Fiction and nonfiction, fiction and reality, how, yeah. whatever you want to put it. Yeah, Gator but, boy. <laughs> yeah. I love and then that. Pro or wrestling the was another step in the chain. Yeah. And yeah, now we have political campaigns for the presidency of the United States. I don't I still wonder if now I work third shift as you know to you know make up for the money that I don't make working with these guys because they're always <laughs> doing charity. But I wonder if I'm sleeping now, if this is all just like, like the hippie band Grateful Dead, you say, this is all a dream. I dreamed one afternoon long ago. Am I asleep in my patrol vehicle on third shift? Yeah, next thing you know, someone's going to shake you, and you're going to wake up on a security detail. Come there you go. Exactly. <laughs> Come to think about it, he, he does have a little likeness to Jerry Garcia. Sl very slight. Very <laughs> slight. I would have to grow the beard back. Were you, were you out there at that Super Bowl where I swear I saw him in the audience? Like I'm like, there's Jerry Garcia. I was like, like, he's dead. I'm like, no, he's out there. He's not really dead. He's pulled an Elvis on us. Jerry's still alive. You were dead set on that too, man. He, he is. He's out there. He's not dead. <laughs> he's You're looking at him. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, if actually, of, okay, dead people that you wish were alive, is that Chuckles' pick? That no. People, you know, are no. you fantasizing about this because you really want Jerry Garcia? I, I, I like Grateful Dead's artwork, but I wasn't really too much into the You're ever. You're a big deadhead. No, nah, I like the one song that everybody liked with the dancing skeletons. And that's that, when Jerry Garcia predicted his own death. Yeah. <laughs> and everything else, like uh, Grateful Dead's like the fish, only better. Uh, when you're done smoking weed <laughs> and there's nothing left, everybody wakes up and says, man, this band sucks. What the hell have I been listening to? <laughs> yeah, and then you have um, now... Is it possible that like Ted Healy, the former Rhode Island Cool Moose, <laughs> was, has, was might have been mistaken for Jerry Garcia too? It could have been him. Which goes full circle to your original subject because when I go to cast my primary vote tomorrow, I'll be writing in Mr. Healy. Healy. That's how unimpressed I am with the picks. So it's going to be a write-in for Bob Healy. Yo, yo, makes yo. it now when he's dead. <laughs> can he still can he still take the office? That, I mean, you yeah. know, now this is a good question. Yeah, is there any? Yeah, well, Tony Jones, he's our political junkie over here. <laughs> Tony, is there any rule in the bylaws of politics that say a candidate has to be alive? <laughs> well, you know, we do have a situation. Hillary in, is doubtful at this yeah, point. Yeah, Bernie know. Sanders is definitely Living rocking that edge. ledge. We do have a situation in the Midwest where a cat is actually a mayor of a town because he won <laughs> the yeah, popular but, vote. Yeah, but the cat's alive. <laughs> the cat is alive, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, if it's a dead person that gets voted in, doesn't that just mean their second in command automatically takes command? No, 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 so no. That, 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 no that's, eva that's, evading the that's evading the question. That's prejudice against dead people. <laughs> I'm going to have my so. lawyer, Johnny Cocker, and come to see you. Uh, wait a minute. I think we're going to start a movement called Dead Lives Matter. <laughs> if, that's, yeah. if that's not a contradiction in terms. That sounds like a great T-shirt. That's a, that's a band's name right there. Yeah, you but better I'd, jart that down. Yeah, but I'd like to know because I'll tell you, if we can have dead people elected to public office, I have a list. I mean, <laughs> I'm putting Abraham Lincoln back into office. I mean, He yeah. didn't serve his full two, two terms there. He, you know what? We're going to go back to the music for a second. When we come back, we're going to – yeah, let's do – yeah, our top five dead people that deserve to be in office more than the five idiots running for office right now <laughs> when we come back. In the meantime, let's go with – you know, a little bit of fantasy here. The sword, Barriel's Blade, here on the Haunted Cabaret, Rhode Island Free Radio.
All right. That was the sword, Barrio's Blade. And this is the Haunted Cabaret. And we're about to take an unusual step. We are about to nominate our own slate of contenders for the highest office in the land here in the United States. Basically because we just we, we think it's a waste of time, you know, nominating any of the five actual presidential uh, hopefuls. So yeah, what we're going to do is we think that a completely dead person would probably do a better job than the mostly dead cast of characters running for office. So, Ch- yeah, so, Chuckles, who would you nominate back from the grave to lead this great uh, nation of ours? I would give Ben Franklin the opportunity. Because he ch- never was president, but he loved such things as prostitutes. That guy knew how to party. Well, that's, drugs, why, he, that's why he was not president. He was too busy partying. Uh, he hated the American people. He did. The deep down inside. He That's loved why went the to, Frenchies. He loved well, he, the Frenchies. Well, he, which, is, which is really good. That would be a good choice, especially because uh, Tony Jones just released our listenership for uh, the past month, Tony. And aren't we doing very well in France? We're doing very well in France for some reason, which makes me nervous. <laughs> okay, so, so should we bring Ben Franklin back from the grave? I think we have still another political connection and yeah. uh, still another reason for the French to uh, even to further in. follow. And he tune was in. Yeah. intelligent, too, unlike these he idiots He's very well spoken. Right now. He, he knew a, how to create a following. Yeah, he was a scientific genius. Well, he was intelligent except when he almost got struck by lightning with that kite and that key. Yeah, that was kind of stupid. Well, that, 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 that was an experiment, though? But he came up with some really good medical experiments and everything. I mean, the guy was a genius, and uh, he never and really he got... he still a, got laid. Yeah. And the state bird that he would have had would have tasted very good, where I can't shoot a bald eagle Yeah, but and would Thanksgiving it. still be the same if... You're damn right it would be. We'd <laughs> well, still hunt that we... turkey. Yeah, we don't care about the national symbol. We're eating those suckers. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Rhode Island's <laughs> national bird is the freaking Rhode Island's... Rhode Island red. Rhode Island red, and we still eat that. Oh, no. chicken tastes good. <laughs> And I may fornicate with him once in a while, but that's... Only after you chop the head off. Yeah. That one goes out to you. You know who you're listening to. (laughs) You guys know I'm a big Ben Franklin fan. If you think about it for a second, not too far from here is Post Road. That was his idea. Yeah. Think about that for a second. That was his friggin' idea. And we're a matter of miles away from it. He was a genius, and he, uh, he also knew about this protection that we are getting right now. Those who, uh... Wanted to be protected, don't deserve freedom. Yeah, so to yeah, speak. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure it's the exact quote, but you're right. Yeah, it's yeah. a paraphrase. Yeah, those who would give up a little bit of liberty for temporary security don't deserve either one, basically. And that yeah. was his saying, and it so stands true. He knew that the government had no place in what was going on in our everyday life. And uh, I think the government forgot about that. I, I, they forgot about it, or they want to willfully... I, mean, uh, I think what, that's buried take it, under paper. They have a whole building out in the Midwest that is meant to like pay attention to what I'm surfing on the web or sending to someone on the phone. Like someone's getting paid. Oh yeah, they a didn't for, that, of money That's my for point. That. They didn't forget about it. They're doing it on purpose. I mean, I mean yeah. I mean, you talk about you know Barack from George Bush and Homeland Security, which sounds suspiciously like something they came up with in the Nazi regime. Then you got Barack Obama, right? Now you got. Donald Trump, who wants to basically protect us from everything except himself. <laughs> Which is probably uh, our greatest danger. No, our, our greatest danger is Ted Cruz, alive or dead, well, because he's, a, he's the beast of the apocalypse. Yeah. But um, other than that, yes. He just needs to be forgotten. He needs to be. I, he's kind of like Voldemort, the name well, we shall not speak. Yeah, well, I don't want to say assassinated because, you know. And don't say that out no, loud. Because, no, because he is a real candidate, and exactly. we don't want to get in trouble. We'll be doing we some charity want. work here, getting you out of the slammer. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yes, I no, mean, I am not endorsing the assassination of any actual presidential candidates. If you get thrown in jail, your upcoming wedding is going to be something completely different. <laughs> yep, to the tune of Jailhouse Rock, <laughs> and it rhymes with rock. You're going to have uh, a whole bunch of new brides. But no, uh, no, Ted Cruz does need to be voted away for good by the uh, system of our republic democracy. How's yeah. that? That sounds better. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Now, of course, there's other uh, branches in the government you have to fill. Right. Like, 
vice president. I'd put a- Alexander Hamilton in there. That guy took no crap from nobody. <laughs> no. You pissed him off. He slapped you in the face, and you went out and you dueled it out with a pair of pistols. Yeah, he just had a, you know, he didn't practice enough uh, with those pistols yeah. you know, before. <laughs> Not so Aaron Burr. Can you imagine that, uh, that version of uh, uh, a dispute? Like, I'm not getting along with Iran. Let's challenge you to a duel. Five steps out. Yeah, well, it's not so much Conflict Iran, over. but like, it, this just go. You know, funny you mentioned Alex. You know, this just goes to show that people now are they complaining about the uh, this campaign or this election being uncivil and uh, disrespectful and like. Oh come yeah. On. I mean, yeah. Let's let's put American but, politics were never civil no, and no. respectful. No, no. Ever. They've always been dirty. Yes, I mean, Donald Trump and Hillary and Bill Clinton paled to insignificance before having your opponent shoot at you from about 10 paces away. And that's yeah, what made right. politics entertaining. But yeah. I, I think the difference was at the end, when it was decided, then everybody shook hands and everybody moved on. <laughs> if you could shake hands. Well, right. or, or, hands or they, the they, you know, yeah. they, they buried the person who failed right. in his... Exactly. Yeah. And everybody they, else now, patted each other on the back. They buried the dirt. They're like, well... Speaker of the House, I would have to put Jeff Davis because... And you say, well, he's not a political figure. He was. He was, a, he was the president of the Confederate States of America. And he was ingenious enough to get those hillbillies <laughs> to back his cause and go fight a, a war that they had no way of winning. Well, actually, Jefferson Davis, I beg to differ, or contrary, was a moron because when he took over the southern states, it's not true that the South couldn't have won. See, the South, the mistake was that Jefferson Davis came up with a battle strategy or a war strategy of attrition, as they call it. In other words, he was going to make the North pay too high a price, you know, and so that the North would eventually quit which was the stupidest strategy imaginable when your side of the war doesn't have any munitions factories to build weapons <laughs> to cause the other side to quit. Oh, they had them. We just shut them down really quickly. They had Really ve- quickly. They had very few, and they imported a lot of it. Yeah, and they were shut down real, real quick. And then no, 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 but, Secretary... No but just, just, no, but just hold on a second. Now, because I was... I've been... Civil War, I... It's a bit of a hobby of mine. And... The Civil War could have been won by the South if the South, instead of fighting a defensive battle, had gone on the offense, invaded the North within the first six months of the hostilities beginning, and marched on the Northern capital and taken it. I think the North would have quit because the North actually was not prepared to back up their tough words. They really weren't. The South could have won that war in the first couple of months of the conflict. After that, absolutely not. I agree with you. We're going to have to have an educational talk about this later on, Mr. Garner, because we we'll take up too much time. Yeah, I think this might. Ju- I think this might be just uh, you know wishful thinking of, of mine. That ever since I saw Roots, I thought you know I would like to have a plantation. Oh, good God! <laughs> uh, I th- this is not Chuckles the Clown. <laughs> I am. You are uh, listening to 990 WBOB. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now, now we'll get no, back no, to. Hold, no, hold, no, hold on here. Now, now, now. See, you guys are drawing an inference that I do not mean to make. I'm not yeah. saying that I want a plantation in the southern fashion with black people at my beck and call. I'm not talking about. Plantation. I'm not talking about black slaves per se. I don't care what color. See, I don't care what color the slaves are. I just want slaves. I, I thought I, I, I you know, any better. I, I thought I saw a SWAT sticker uh, underneath you. <laughs> oh, he right was there. at the Trump rally today. <laughs> yeah, you, you, uh, you, you definitely I tried, were. I tried to get to the Trump rally. They wouldn't let me in. <laughs> I, I wonder why you, you can't were be... even too extreme for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> but no, wait, 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 no, no, even no. Badandi had to stop for a second. <laughs> what? Badandi was like, "Hello." <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. First of all, the Nazis did not in, in, endorse slavery. They what are you ki- talking about? They, they, other the, than enslave, uh, they turning the Jews into slaves was only the uh, step on the path to killing them. I'm not talking about putting a bunch of people because of their nationality, race, color, or creed into slavery. I'm not talking about that. All I'm talking about is that slavery in principle, in other words, you're trying to, the Roman Empire, right? Are you the talking Rome- about like indentured servants or no, I'm flat out about, slaves? I'm talking about slave girls. Uh, I, what I'm talking about is the Romans, He wants right? a harem. 
Oh, there you go. Does he want it complete with the uh, little boys that come up to him before battle? No, not the little boy. Chuckles, that. this is, you know what, wait, hold on. This has got to be, Tony, is this like the five or six, the seventh time Chuckles the Clown has mentioned these little harem boys? <laughs> well, I know. I, <laughs> as a student of history. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, I know my thing. Yeah, yeah, just as long as he's not a practice, a, a, practic, <laughs> a practical practicing student of history. You did bring up the Roman Empire yes, again. And I, yes, and every time I bring up the Roman Empire in wishful thinking, it's for, gla- it's for the gladiator games and the slave girls. G-I-R-L-S. I thought you you only got the girls at the end if you won. You all started <laughs> off like... Unless you're a nobleman. And then you just have the girls right from the get-go. Well, There's no such thing as a nobleman in Rome. <laughs> no, actually, what I would be is probably one of those slave traders. Like, if you ever watch Spartacus, that's going to be the job to end all jobs. Like, the guy that buys and sells the females captured slaves. Boy, we've gone well, really I mean, far away taste- from... Uh, Political guys we choose. No, huh? no, no we. No, we're no, still we, on the same dirty. We're path. still on the same dirty <laughs> political subject. Okay. <laughs> right, wanna... Buying and selling human beings. It's a human trafficking it's is hum- actually a huge. So you would thing resurrect right uh, it, Julius Caesar for your political office. Actually, right? I was thinking Caligula. But okay, that's just as bad. Uh, now, yeah. if you're if you're if you have knowledge of the Old Testament of the Good Book, there was also this thing called the concubine. Which I would not have a problem with that being brought back. No, and which is let's just say a slave by any other name. <laughs> well, so yeah, okay. If we're going to be politically correct, okay, Tony, okay, fine. I would prefer a society in which I am waited on hand and foot by female <laughs> concubines. Are you sure? Because Danny needs a job. <laughs> He'd be willing to not, help you out. Not Old Testament eunuchs. <laughs> you said testament. Eunuchs. <laughs> and eunuchs. <laughs> Testies and eunuchs. Only here in Providence. Club galleries Friday night. Yes. Come see testes. Yeah, but no, but no, Ab- we have not strayed from politics at all. Sadly, no. No, slave, you know. No, I may be we joking. went from Jeff Davis being an idiot to owning <laughs> concubines, concubines. And having your own harem. Not yeah. slaves, concubines. Yeah. Yes. But it no, what prettier? Right, but what is politics except buying and selling human beings? That's see, kind of all you politicians notice, see, do. Have some, <laughs> have some faith in me for me being able to bring the conversation around full circle, which we have now done. All right. All right. Now, as far as we are not going to see somebody like this. And again, this is wishful thinking. We are not going to see somebody of the caliber of Ben Franklin in this country again. Never oh, again. Never. Ever. Nope. Done. Those days no. are gone. No, the closest thing we came to Ben Franklin in the last, in my memory, is Bill Clinton. And that was a very poor, poor, poor imitation. He had the girls, but no brains, nothing else to go with it. And you know why? As someone who has run for public office, anybody of that Yeah, but caliber, you ran for lieutenant governor. Which is a, a total waste of space. But, right, right. Um, Anybody of that caliber would be chased off in today's political climate unless you're oh, yeah. someone like me who has no feelings and then, you know. Either that or you're independently wealthy. Well, yes, well, yes because actually if Ben Franklin ran care. against Donald Trump, Donald Trump would just accuse him of whore mastering. Yeah, they'd say he's a pervert and, I yeah, mean, just pervert, imagine. Pervert, whore man, you know, and, yeah, and throwing condoms at him. And <laughs> <laughs> just imagine really if Ben like that. He's and stuffing out, his pockets with a moon. And out comes Alexander Hamilton with his pistol and challenges. <laughs> Just imagine if Benjamin Franklin had a Facebook. You know, what would be posted to his walls from all those French women? Uh, he, do, he does have a Facebook. I have visited Ben Franklin's Facebook. It's, I'm going to put some of those up there next time. Hey, Benny boy, I got something for you. Now, uh, you have to have a Secretary of Defense, right? We've got to bring well, back. Absolutely. A, so I, I'm saying you go with the gold. You go with Jag or Hoover. I mean, he's not going to mess around. Oh, you, no, he's, he won't mess around you, all right. You piss us <laughs> off. Your ass is getting glass. You're, you're worried about me bringing back plantations, and you want to bring back J. Edgar Hoover. Wow. Darn right. Why, why See, don't we just bring back Senator McCarthy while we're at it? Okay. I have a pick. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Wow. <laughs> so let's do I, it. I, I have oh a pick goodness. for the defense uh, position, and that is Napoleon. A wow. guy who gets, Angry little short man. A guy who gets slaughtered in Egypt. 
and then marches back to France and says, oh, things went awesome in Egypt. I mean, he's almost like Donald Trump. Like, I won so much in Egypt. Or, or even better, you know, so yeah, Napoleon hard. is like the Ric Flair of politics. I mean, you know, Ric Flair on, what was it, Battle Bowl every year. I think it was, what, Super Bowl or Battle Bowl. Every year, the four horsemen would get annihilated. And then the next day on, te- on television wrestling, you know, covered in bandages as they were, they'd be back to say how they kicked butt on. Uh, and so, yeah. Uh, Sacre, woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I and the last guy I have would be Alexander Jackson. His, for what position? Whatever he wants, because he's a brutal MFer. And all the stuff that he did for our history, if you ever followed him closely, he That's had an no. That's an interesting truck. I don't know that name that well. Who, who yeah, is this guy exactly? He has no heart. He's a senator that has no heart, and he backs a lot of, um, let's put it this way, uh, the annihilation of certain people that shouldn't be on areas that they want. Ah. So I'll just keep it that way, politically correct and uh, FCC friendly. <laughs> okay, before you slip from that FCC friendly position, uh, posture. Let's go back to the music a second. Let's go with, uh, how about some Soundgarden? Been away too long on the Haunted Cabaret on Rhode Island Free Radio. All right, that was Soundgarden. Been away too long, and we've only been away what four minutes? The four minutes it took that song to play, and you know we have had more controversy. I think I've opened up a little can of uh, proverbial worms with this uh, dead uh, leadership 
Yeah, and I got to apologize for your listeners and our listeners. It's Andrew Why? Jackson. Sorry, oh, okay. oh, not, Andrew ja- not okay. Alexander Jackson. There is an Alexander Jackson. He's an architect of the 1803. <laughs> Different person. Uh, Andrew Jackson, one of the most violent United States presidents that uh, arguably has ever been in office, exterminated more people to get what he wanted than, uh, than we could probably... Yeah, because Jackson was... Was it Jackson that the Native American tribes were gradually exterminated, but for a while there it wasn't with the intention of genocide. It was just they're in our way. They're in our way. It we're was exterminating done piecemeal, it. right? Well, it's not really. At some point, didn't one of the was it ja- was it Jackson? One of the presidents kind of made it national policy. Let's yeah. get rid of these people once and for all. Was that, that Jackson? was Jackson? Okay, he wanted to get them out of the way because they were in the property that he wanted. Anybody that was in that Louisiana purchase that didn't want to give up their property. Voluntarily, well, they were giving it up one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. Let's put it that way. I, I think if we had a president of that caliber, there'd be no one messing with us. No, but the question is, did he also? What other presidential qualities did he have besides viciousness? I mean, we can get the viciousness from Trump and Cruz. Exactly. I mean, well, he got things done. He's vicious, and he did what he said he well, was going to do. We don't know what these two psychos can do. So yeah, nothing. Well, it depends how psychotic they want to be. But yeah. no, I, but I do no, but I do take your point. Actually, if you want to talk about people that just decided to get done what they wanted to get done, and they just tore the Constitution to shreds, uh, the leader of that uh, bunch of henchmen would have to be Abraham Lincoln. Oh, he did a lot of. News. I mean, Abraham. Li- yeah, I mean Abraham Lincoln. Once the war was declared, the war between the states, he pretty much threw the Constitution in a. Oh, yeah. I won't say I won't say the trash can because he got it back, well, but he, 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 he definitely it put it in a he put it in a lower desk drawer. <laughs> put it that way. He stopped a major revolt down in Maryland by stopping the freedom of press, like saying, "Oh yeah, well, you, yeah, guess it, what? You're not doing that, right? And this, if you release that paper, you're you're going to get executed as a um, an enemy of the state, right? Yeah. So, oh, well, guess what? We're not releasing that paper this weekend. Yeah, and as a matter of then. Uh, then one of the other, uh, let's just say, amoral types of pre- non-moral, lacking in morals presidents was would have to be the uh, sainted Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, World War II declared, and he used that as a good excuse to round up every Japanese-American in this country, throw them in concentration camps. And one of the first presidents to start bugging earphones and, and phones that we were using, uh, he was one of the first to start doing that to make sure you weren't conversating with Nazi spies. Yeah, I mean, and okay, and we're, you know, the war is the war, but yeah, the, one of the most blatant, you know, I guess one of the most blatant examples of racism. I mean, because you know, those who you know, those of you out there that like to study history, um, yeah, we were fighting two enemies, like Germany and Japan. Right. I mean, German Americans just went about their merry way. Yeah. I mean, there was no disrespect shown to German Americans that mm-hmm. I know of, right? Nope. None that I no. can recall. Meanwhile, right? Meanwhile, every you could have have a Japanese citizen that was went back three generations, right? Yep. Didn't matter. His property was confiscated in the concentration camp. He went. It was but so it, racist. You didn't have to be Japanese. You could have been Chinese. Any Asian descent. You were thrown in there. I mean, uh, was it George Takei's family was uh, put in one of those camps? Uh-huh. And left there, and his family had been here since the railroading times. And you know. why? No, what, you know, it's funny history. Why does this all sound familiar to me from recent times? Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like anybody wearing a turban nowadays is apparently Muslim. <laughs> exactly. We just generalize now. It, right after nine eleven in Coventry, this family owns a gas station. They got their business destroyed. It has smashed the windows. Everything. The people that owned it were Greek. <laughs> That's how bad it got for a yeah, short time. Or, or, after and, that, and that just tells you something about the American educational yeah. system. Too. They, they'll terrorize people that are Indian, too. Like They got a dot in their head like, yeah. oh, well, they're from the Middle East. No, India is not from the Middle East. No, no the American citizen, and I'll tell you, we, you know, all our listeners in Europe, you know, over in France, you know, where they do still have legitimate educational systems. Hmm. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about more than our listeners over here in the States. Um, you know more about our history than we do. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm trying to say, <laughs> basically. So I guess this little history diatribe is, you know, goes out more to our listeners back on the continent, you know, rather than to our listeners here, because 
99% of our listeners here don't know what the F we've been talking about <laughs> uh, uh, uh. since I mentioned the word plantation. <laughs> I didn't have they're to. They're still stuck yeah. on that, George. That I didn't have to apologize for oh, yeah, the president. Oh, yeah, they're still stuck on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're still way back in plantation land. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately for me, before the hate starts rolling in, unfortunately for me, if our listeners don't know too much about American history, they also, unfortunately, I don't think, know too much about the... Uh, the Roman skill, history? Well, I was going to say the skill of satire to make a point. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's lost. That, that's, a, that's a lost start except by me. Yeah. So I am probably in trouble right now because we have a lot of people that are non-satiric in nature. Yeah, they and, just uh, don't get it. They just, they're just not getting they it. They even stopped printing the onion, so what's that tell you? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Wow. So, so I gave you mine. What about your political leaders? And most okay. 95 percent, all mine were American. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I could, I could, uh, I could go into it. If I wanted to go humorously, I'd give you the Roman emperors and that type of thing. But I'll tell you, since you, you know, put it on more of a f- more serious note for a few minutes there, I'll go with George Washington. Now, the reason I say that is, you know, for you know, he was the first president. But the thing about George Washington that's impressive and the reason that George Washington lives up to his legend more than any other leader in possibly world history is because he's the only human being that I can think of offhand, at least in America, at least in... uh, There might have been a couple of leaders in ancient Rome that did the same thing, I don't possibly, but George Washington was at the end of the American War for Independence was in a position of absolute power. In other words, the Congress, he could have been, the, the American people were ready to acclaim him king for life by proclamation. Yeah. Instead, George Washington handed over his general stripes to the Congress, which he never got along with, but he handed over his general stripes, put his sword away, and he went back home. And it was, he, gave, he walked away from absolute power. Yeah. And I don't think that's... And I think King George in England said when he heard that, he said he realized the caliber of the man that he had been fighting against, and he knew why he had lost. He said if he does that, he's the greatest man in the world. Even the King of England admitted it. And I don't, yeah, I don't think that's ever been done before in that and way, and I don't think it's never again. been done, and will probably never be done again. Interesting fact, uh, as much as the king uh, liked him for that, that bounty that was put on his head during the Revel War was never taken away. Oh, he didn't say he didn't like him. He respected him. Yeah, yeah that that's bounty, the difference between liking big, huge someone difference. and respecting someone. That bounty was still on his head when he became president. Well, yeah, because, oh, yeah. I, because I don't think... He was still an enemy of England. He no was a traitor. He yeah, was because a traitor. Yeah, the English... I don't know. I don't think the English ever genuinely recognized American independence for quite a while. Not they? for a while. And no. they definitely looked at him as being a big-time traitor. And that, he, he was uh, one of those things where they wanted to bring him over to England to persecute and try him. Where well, any other guy, they, they probably would have yeah. yeah. probably hung him out in the street, but they wanted him. Well, uh, John Hancock was the first guy to sign the Declaration of Independence. Probably was high on their list. Too. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, all those guys—they're all up on there. But e- England's attitude was, well, we'll wait to, for this thing to topple in a couple of years, then we'll just, uh, you know, head back Let's over. Scoop there. them all up. Right. And I'll tell you, they almost had a second chance with the War of 1812. I what mean, are you talking about? They have a third chance right now with whatever <laughs> president's going into office. Yeah. I- I'll say hail to the queen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. So uh, well, okay, I mean, so she's all right, looking so better than some of our candidates. She's even at, even healthier. at even at ninety, <laughs> yeah, even at nine hundred, what ninety? I it? would it was still rather throw my hot dog down the halls of the Queen than the halls of Miss Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, well, I've explained to you who and what Hillary Clinton is. Huh. Yeah, we've had uh, this robot. discussion. We've, we've, we've had this discussion. Yes. But okay, but you heard it here first. If Donald <laughs> Trump or Hillary Clinton should be elected president, Chuckles the Clown will petition to become a British citizen. <laughs> did, did you see the stuff in the... Uh, and, and now, whether they will accept him and want him as a British citizen... Oh, uh, they, they won't. You never know. They definitely they won't. But did you sense of humor. Did you see the article about the town in Canada allotting the Americans to come in if Donald <laughs> Trump gets into office? They're like... Oh yeah, go ahead. We're There's opening like up all sorts of things for you guys. Oh, refugee, this refugee camp in of Canada. Things that yeah. you have to like abide by, though. But that's okay if you get away from Donald Trump <laughs> until he buys Canada. Then we're screwed. Because you know he's going to buy Mexico. He just wants to build the wall to charge them an entry fee. I'm not quite sure if that makes any sense whatsoever, but 
Anyway, getting back to the music, let's go back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Segway made itself. Last in line. <laughs> last in line to Canada. Last in line out of Mexico. Last, last in line. Here on the Haunted Cabaret, Rhode Island, free radio.
All right, that's some Dio last in line. And I don't know, yeah, who will be the last in line to cross the American border into Canada? Yeah, that, I didn't realize that. You know, Chuckles, yeah, you're, that's a, you're serious on that one. That, that's that's a actually a, the Canadian. Some of the Canadian provinces have offered Americans refugee status uh, if Donald Trump becomes president. Yeah, it's serious. Even they know how bad that is if that guy gets in the office. I think Connecticut and Massachusetts should start offering refugee status to Rhode Islanders. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm t- whether they offered it formally or not, <laughs> uh, probably beginning a couple of months from now, I will be partaking of that uh, refugee status from what i is it it's not there's a better word for it than refugee though uh it, expat what it was expatriated expat tony political prisoner <laughs> no 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 i'm going to my own free will carpet bagger no i don't plan to be any more successful there than here <laughs> so you're gonna add to connecticut's downfall thanks george <laughs> we appreciate that I, i'll tell you the the Connecticut doesn't need anybody to add to its downfall. I'll tell you, you can get on Route 95, you know, as our New England listeners know, and you can travel from Rhode Island to New York City and see nothing but blight yeah. <laughs> from Route 95 looking out. As a matter of fact, you know, the area of Connecticut I'm going to be moving to is more, I guess, northeastern Connecticut, you'd say. It's you know, up, in the, up in the country, up in the rural areas. Now, um, yeah, you don't want to be in any of those uh, coastline Connecticut cities these oh, days. No. No, absolutely Hartford, not. Hartford, no. Hey. What well, was the scary one that uh, Peabody's in that we went to? Well, uh, New Haven? New Haven. That's very New scary. New Haven's pretty skeevy. No. New, London New, is, London. Uh, no, New London's, New London's getting, better. getting better. Yeah. but it's still kind of eh. Yeah, I'll tell you, there's 93 exits between Rhode Island and New York City, and every one of those, pretty much every one of those exits leads you to a town that H.P. Lovecraft <laughs> would be proud to write a story about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. And he'd have the cast of characters in there. The worst is the stretch to the casinos. Oh, those are gnarly. <laughs> Let me tell you something, too. Like, New Haven's one of those towns. I, it has a lot of cool stuff in it, but it's, like, literally, like, to it the difference of – Flicking the light switch. We were driving down there, and it was still rather dark. We were going to the, yes, a museum, folks, uh, to look at dinosaurs, entertaining stuff. Oh, the, the Yale uh, yeah. Paleontology yeah. Museum? The yeah. PBD Museum, really cool. We're going down there, and we drive by this park that's right in front of the college, and it's got this gorgeous waterfall yeah, coming beautiful. up. Well, I'm like, well, we're going to have lunch there. I think that's a nice spot. So we go in there, and, of course, you know, darkness turns to day. We get in the museum. We come out. We pull over to the park, uh, look over at the park bench, and there's a bum with a heroin needle in his arm and another bum crawling out from underneath the bench. So needless to say, we did not have lunch I, there. I didn't see that at nighttime. All I saw was the beautiful waterfall. <laughs> I didn't see the people yes, sleeping the, on the bench. That's because the bums were under the water bathing. <laughs> yeah. No, that water was clean. Well, they didn't go near that. Well, apparently, you know, maybe you have been privileged to see in one outing, you've seen... An extinct species, an assumed to be extinct species. <laughs> if, you yeah, know, we that... watch them slowly extinct themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. By the way, speaking of going extinct, Tony, how much more time do we have in uh, this? Uh, about six minutes. Six minutes. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. We can actually. No, is there anything? Yeah, Chuckles. Why don't we mention the uh, the event we got going on? Then we're going to go to a song and then get out of here. Oh, look at that! I I screwed her notes up. He did. Darn you, clown. All right, April 30th, this coming Saturday, we have Paranormal for Paws, which is going to be at the Masterpiece Dog Training Center up at 264 Fisher Street, Franklin, Mass. Admission is $10 or $5 with a wish list item. It'll be from 1.30 to 6.30 p.m. to support some much-needed animals. Okay, can it be, does it have to be dogs or can it be any animal? Because I'd like to contact my dead iguana. (laughs) I'm not sure if they have a limitation. They have a wish list posted up on their website. Okay, because my iguana wobble, he tried to kill me one day, and I I just want to let him know that I outlived him. I bet the spirit medium Tiffany Rice would love to talk to you about that. She is a doll, and I will, like, offer her up to chat with you. Be like, hey, Tiffany, I know someone that needs to chat. (laughs) (laughs) needs <laughs> <laughs> chat. We also have Saturday, May 7th is going to be free comic day. Chuckles and laughs show cast and crew will Nerd be at Christmas. the Rubber Chicken Comics up in Bellingham, Massachusetts. Rubber Chicken is going to be having specials all weekend long. So if you can't make it Saturday, make it Sunday. But we won't be there Sunday. 
June 11th is going to be the Gatsby Day Parade. Everyone from Warwick knows the route. It's going to kick off at 10 a.m. Then Saturday. Fire. Yeah, fire. <laughs> There's nothing better than fire, Tony. June 25th is going to be the New England Quahog Festival. There will be a sea creature parade at 10 a.m. down in Wickford. It is going to also be followed by a festival from 11 to 6 p.m. down at the town beach. There'll be beer, according to Tony. There's going to be live music, entertainment, a whole lot of fun. Hopefully Johnny. And you, you get to see uh, Chuckles in sea creature gear. Now, you did forget. I July he's going to be a mermaid. Yeah. July 4th, we will be up in Foster Gloucester, the Ancient and Horrible Parade on Route 44. We will be returning to that. Yes, we will be returning this year to the Ancient and Horrible. We, were, we had been missing last year due to weather. We will be returning this year. You were and banned. <laughs> no, soggy wet clowns is super scary for small children. We were trying to do them a favor. They also scared Link Chafee. <laughs> that was great. That is the best political photo ever, Tony. I put that up on his site for when he was running for president. I don't know why he didn't get in. <laughs> Our last event of the summer is going to be July 17th, 16th and 17th. Saturday and Sunday, Ocean State Paracon up at the Assembly Theater in Harrisville, Rhode Island. This year, they will be benefiting the Rhode Island Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Admission is $10 for the day, 15 for the weekend. It'll be filled with lots of paranormal folks, craft stuff, goodies, all that funness, and lots of chit-chatting going on in the nice AC at Assembly Theater in case you're like, oh my God, it's hot. Just go inside, listen to one of the guest speakers and cool off and come get some clown goodies down by the river. All right. I'll tell you, that's that's a list of things to do. Hey, that's, you know, it's, it's a busy 10 weeks. And you said goodies more than once. He is not showing up. You never know. <laughs> if I coax him with the right diaper, I might get him to show up. Okay, we're ending the show on diapers. That's You're welcome. Just, just what I wanted. It's a horror show. <laughs> Nothing's more and horrible. You know, than it's another great segment because the lead singer of this next band that you're going to play has been rumored to be wearing diapers on stage. Oh, it's not a rumor. He does. <laughs> the person in question is Ozzy. The band is Black Sabbath, taking us out of this week's edition of the Haunted Cabaret Air Dance here on Rhode Island Free Radio. Nighty night. Ha, 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 ha.